Citizen scientists met recently to celebrate Water Heritage Day in Wexford Heritage Park to discuss the latest findings of the 2017 Citizen Science Coastal Streams pilot project. This project is funded by the South East Fisheries Local Action Group and is led by Wexford County Council in collaboration with Karen Dubsky TCD, Coast Watch and the Local Authority Water and Communities Office. This project provides participants with the skills to identify pressures and precious wildlife in their local coastal streams, with a particular focus on Bano Bay. The Water Framework Directive is a roadmap which helps us to protect and restore the water quality in our rivers, in our lakes, along our coast and in our drinking water. Currently, many of our water bodies are affected by a range of issues, including pollution. Government agencies and local communities are working together to try and resolve these issues. Banno Bay in County Wexford is one of these water bodies. Banno Bay is important for a whole variety of reasons, including aquaculture, tourism, nature conservation, shellfish production, fishing. Banno Bay is a vulnerable water body because of the surrounding sloping land and also because of the number of small streams and rivers flowing into the bay. Along the coast, an abundance of green algae in the summertime is an indication of nutrient enrichment along the beaches. Kick sampling is a standardised way of taking samples and seeing what animals are in the bottom of the stream. And taking what they had got by kicking the ground, putting the net downstream, finding what they have, de decanting it into trays and looking and identifying the species using a species chart. Here in this for example you can see there were even small eels swimming around. I got involved um, with um, citizen science to learn more about testing the water quality that was flowing through the stream because further down on the shore there's um, some perennial glasswort growing which is the only place um, in Banna Bay that it's thriving. So I, wa I wanted to be sure that my stream was um, clean and not bringing any pollution into the uh, Banna Bay. They showed me how to test the quality of the water and that's what I'm going to do now, is to take a sample of the water that's flowing through my stream into Banna Bay. So I'm just dipping the, um, the test strip into the, the water and I, I'll wait now for 30 seconds for that to, um, to, for the test to come through and then I'll match it with the, um, the chart that I have that I got from Citizen Science and I can tell the, um, if there's any nitrate or the level of nitrate in the, the water. That's good news. What we saw Liam doing there testing the water was done by other stream watchers right around. But they did something else because the nitrate test just tells you what is available in the stream in nutrients that second while you're testing. The more interesting one is, well, who is living in this stream? Well, I'm 43 years farming in the bay, or down adjacent to the Banno Bay, and it's always been very special to me over the years because, especially with such risks of pollution nowadays, I tend not to go that road. And in saying that, it's, some beautiful, it's a beautiful area, it's well known, and thankfully this spring I was very surprised and especially into the early summer to see lots of little fish in this particular stream that I cross quite often. Now as well as that just up from the stream we have lots of nature thankfully it's like a little hidden gem so hopefully we can still protect that. And here you have bits of gravel, so different flatfish can lie in this with a little bit. You can see that this is still brackish water. The most special about coastal streams is that they interact directly with the sea. 
a salmon, a sea trout, an eel, a lamprey. Imagine you were one of them trying to get up that stream, waiting for the tide to rise. What is good about this culvert is that it's rectangular. So even though it's quite long and fish don't particularly like going through long tunnels, at least it is rectangular and has different stones in it. So the water meanders when it's quite, uh, when there isn't a very strong flow and the fish can go up through it and upstream. Key outcomes of this flag project were that local people engaged with their streams. Previously unmapped streams and drains were identified by locals, adding to the official catchments.ie dataset. And fish were found in all the streams. Salmon fry was found in one, and we won't tell you which one. Key outcomes on the negative side were that streams have problems. Amongst these are nitrate levels, which were too high. These feed the green seaweed mats on the mudflats and need to be addressed. Many streams were also modified and include obstacles for fish. There is so much potential to find out more about our streams right around Ireland because Ireland is blessed with lots of water and lots of streams. I want to really thank everyone who participated in the pilot phase of this project and the imagination and the huge amount of work which went into this. <laughs>